Cool. Uh, I'm Felix. Uh, I'll be presenting Better Managing 19 uh, PO files in Django. Uh, okay, so let's start. Uh, the agenda for today, I'm going to tell you a little, bit, a little bit who am I, uh, what is INTN and localization, uh, what is the current workflow with Django and the proposed workflow and the one that I work on. I'm going to demo this and then we'll be summarizing what we have learned. So who am I? I'm Ecuadorian. I'm based in Quito, Ecuador. I come all the way from South America. I'm a web developer at Stack Builders, mainly focused on backend technologies. Uh, my core languages are Python and Haskell, and currently working on a Haskell project. Um, I'm a community lover, so that's why I'm here, and that's why in Quito, back in Quito, I uh, lead the Quito Lambda initiative that is mainly pro uh, functional programming related topics. Uh, I'm a functional programming enthusiast and a sneakerhead. Uh, I've been PyCon at, at two times a speaker at PyCon Latam, and it's my first time at DjangoCon in Europe. And yeah, so I'm my first event in person also. Uh, that's a picture of my city that I took some years ago, like six or seven years ago. Uh, still good, so I love it. Uh, maybe you know my country because of the Galapagos Islands. If you hear of that, uh, that's Ecuador. Uh, and yeah, so let's go. Uh, what is INTN and localization and what are the difference? Uh, these are like mix of terms, so I wanted to clarify before starting. Uh, these definitions are taken from the Django official documentation. So internationalization is preparing of software for localiz localization and is usually done by us, by the developers. And localizing something is writing the translations needed and the local formats, and that's usually done by translator. So just to be 100% clear, we are in the internationalization side of the things. OK, so how's done Django? Uh, I'm going to focus this talk on static uh, templates and translated static pages. So this is how it's done. Uh, a developer must tag all the strings that need translation. Uh, we'll be loading the internationalization tags in our HTML files. As you can see, then we can use uh, a couple of uh, uh, keywords that we have, like tra translate, rock translation, and stuff. Uh, then, uh, with a couple of uh, CLI commands, we will run, and uh, Django will go through these uh, HTML files, we'll extract the target strings, and put them in a file that is called a PO file. So, what is a PO file? Uh, and before continuing, uh, how many of you have done internationalization in Django? Oof. <laughs> Almost everyone. So yeah, you know what I'm talking about then. So a PO file is a message file uh, that is plain text and it represents a single language in Django. And it contains all the, all the strings that, are, that need translation and that should be represented in the given language. Uh, and in my opinion, uh, it's the standard for translation. It's not like the official standard, uh, but I've seen in many projects uh, that does internationalization uh, that this is the standard. So how is composed? Uh, PO files are made of PO entries. Uh, that's why they call. Uh, they have a white space. They have references. And they have a message ID that is the untranslated string, and a message string that is the already translated string. So uh, PO entry to be valid needs at least these three uh, these three fields. Um, so yeah, that's how they are made. So uh, what is the current workflow in Django? So if you know, uh, we have. Uh, it looks like this. We have a make messages command and a compile messages. So when uh, we have the make messages command, what it does, it, it goes through the, uh, all the templates, all the HTML, and extract the target uh, strings to the PO files. Then we send this PO file from translation, or we translate uh, ourselves, or we use like a tool like DeepL or something like that, but we translate them. Uh, then we take this uh, PO, the translated PO back into our base, uh, code base, and we compile messages, so we run compile messages that will create a binary uh, that Django can understand and can interpret, and our site will be, uh, will be uh, translated. So, yep, I forgot to pass that one. So, uh, before continuing, uh, the issues that I mentioned here uh, it started to happen uh, a little bit of history of the workflow. Uh, we started with this client that has many, 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 plenty, thousands of, of pages. 
Uh, most of them were dynamic, and they were managed through Wagtail and the CMS. So, but many of them, and thousands of them, are still static. So when we started translated uh, the, this workflow that we talked before, this one, uh, it made sense. Like, uh, we didn't have any problem at all. We were happy. The client were happy. Uh, the third party company that was translated our PO files, uh, they were happy too. Uh, but as time passed, uh, around three or four months um, that we started, we have like seven different languages and like a 5,000 pages being translated. So we got uh, these PO files were a mess, like 5,000K lines of, of PO entries, and uh, they were not happy. N nobody was happy. Uh, so we, we need to took a decision because the, the last translation that we sent, the whole PO file, it took like a month and a half to be translated because of these difficulties. So yeah, the issues came uh, when the, the PO file uh, size increased. So we were sending the PO file over and over again. Uh, we needed uh, to wait for the PO file to come back to run a, another round of translation. So that was an issue. We were basically stuck uh, until they, they sent us back the translations. Uh, the PO files were getting pretty big and the translator were not happy. They, we, uh, the job for them was difficult to perform. Uh, we were not getting things done. Uh, and the translation process, as I said, uh, took a long time, especially when it's done manually. And if you have to work with third party uh, translation services, it can take a while. So, and we didn't, uh, we didn't have parallel translation projects uh, because of the first, uh, first problem I mentioned. We needed to wait uh, to come the PO file to come back, and then we can send another one. So uh, this is the proposed workflow and the one that we implemented for, for that, um, for, the, for uh, solving this. So the main idea is to produce a smaller PO files that contains only untranslated or relevant strings and that can be sent in parallel. Uh, so before going to the workflow itself, uh, let's see a couple of more uh, concepts around PO files. So as I mentioned, uh, before, we have three needed things uh, that are uh, necessary to have a valid PO entry, but we also have a couple of more options. Uh, for example, the strata comments, um, these are defined like a comments given uh, by the programmer directed at the translator. And these comments are, uh, are, are called extracted, sorry, these comments are called extracted comments because the XGTX program extracts them from the program source code. Um, so, basically, we have this option of adding something like a static uh, comment. The thing is that uh, if we did in the code in this, uh, we needed to go uh, every, every time to go and add uh, a extracted comment in the code page, in the HTML templates. So, we didn't see that very feasible. We, it was going to take a lot of time. As I said, we have like 5,000 pages being translated. So. We decided to use the PO leaf uh, library that is uh, using the Django core and is uh, how make messages work under the hood. So we took advantage of this library and basically we started adding uh, these extracted comments programmatically. Another important concept is to the fuzzy flag. Uh, this flag shows that a message string, or a, a translation could be not correct anymore. Uh, this happens when a string changes uh, and the make messages command is able to detect that change. Uh, but only a translator can, just, uh, can judge if the translation uh, is correct or not. So basically, if you have the fuzzy flag, uh, something is not translated or the translation is wrong. Uh, so we took this fuzzy flag as a, and we consider it as a uh, not translated entry. Uh, so yeah, then uh, we needed to find the definition of untranslated. Uh, what condition should a PO entry fulfill to be considered untranslated? Uh, a message string should be empty, uh, the entry is tagged as fuzzy, uh, or in our case, the entry does not contain a project comment. Because uh, if it has the project tag, uh, it will mean that uh, it's being translated or in the process of translation. So yeah, this is the workflow. A couple of steps more uh, from what we had before. So we have the same, the same make messages uh, at the beginning. 
and the compile messages, uh, I didn't fill the screen, so I have to obvious that, but uh, the compile messages is, uh, has also to be performed, and those are the same. Uh, well, when talking about the make messages command, uh, we needed to monkey patch this one, because uh, as I mentioned, extracted comments are, are look up in the code, but we didn't want to go to the 5,000 files and, and, uh, and add those, uh, those extracted comments. So we need basically to make make messages preserve these commands, uh, sorry, these comments. Uh, yeah, so we monkey patch this, uh, uh, this, this command. Uh, and at, at the top, you can see how it's run. In this case, we are running the in the DE locale, that is a translator from German. So make messages uh, will give us the PO files, uh, same as before. So here I start the, the workflow. Uh, we implemented these tag messages. Um, and we can uh, basically say, hey, just take the untranslated entries and tag with an extracted comment uh, with a given name of the project. So we will get the main PO file tag with the untranslated strings. And this can be done by file, if you want to, uh, to translate just one page. Or it can be done by subdirectory, or even it can be done by, a, by an app, so by a complete uh, Django app. Uh, so yeah, then we, is, uh, we have these extract messages that what we, uh, this command uh, will do is to take the previously, previously tagged uh, entries and put them in an, uh, a new temporary file, a new PO file that just contains relevant strings, as I said. So with these new uh, generated POs, uh, we, could, we can have now parallel translations because we're not sending the same uh, string twice. We are sending one by one and we are sure that they are not repeating uh, because of the definition of untranslated that we saw before. So we are sending this for the translation process. The translator only has the relevant strings that we need to be translated. And uh, when translated, uh, we need a, a, a way to merge back these translated messages to a main PO file. So we have this command called uh, merge messages uh, that has a couple of more uh, parameters. And as you can see, uh, it, it has the a relative path to the previously generated uh, PO file. Uh, so yeah, with the mer merge message command, what we are doing is taking all the translated strings and putting them back to the, to the main PO file. And then we have, finally, we have the clean messages command uh, that we will do. This will uh, uh, delete the comments that uh, we added at the beginning, and also will delete the PO file generated in the struct messages step. Okay, so it's demo time. Uh, it's a demo, not demo as yesterday, because I didn't want any inconvenience. So let's see uh, what I'm doing here. I'll be adding uh, an untranslate, uh, a new, hopefully it looks big enough. So I'm adding a new untranslated uh, a string to our index.html file and tagging in as, and as that one needs translation. And as you can see, I'm pretty bad at typing. So we will run the, the make messages command that I mentioned before. That is the one that has been monkey patched. As you can see, uh, we have a little more output than the normal make messages. We done some, we performed some uh, more steps. As you can see, it was added to the Django PO file, uh, this new untranslated entry. As you can see, uh, on top of it, uh, we have two already translated uh, strings. So what we need to do now is to uh, tag, uh, run the tag messages. And uh, you can see the extracted comment was added in the untranslated string only, and not in the two above, above it. And as you can see, also the, the console, the terminal yells something like, one entry has been tagged and we, with this project name. Uh, the next step uh, should be the struct messages, and this will create our temporary PO file. Um, so as you can see, it was written. Uh, we have a new file called PO Project Django Con Europe 2022. Uh, it has the same header as the original uh, PO file, uh, but it just contains the only untranslated string. 
So imagine that we're the translator. Uh, we need to translate that string. So I'm gonna put something like, hello, Django Pong. And yeah, my typing is bad, sorry. Uh, in German, because we are in the D location. And <laughs> sorry, I don't know German. Uh, but yeah, so we can perform the mes messages command that has a, a couple of uh, uh, more uh, parameters, but it yells that it improved was successful, so yay. We have our translation back, uh, but we still have the, the extracted comment at the top of the entry. So we need to delete that. Uh, we need to delete the temporarily PO file created before, so uh, we're gonna delete that with the clean messages. Pokemon, uh, local D and project Django Con Europe 2022. Uh, that should be it. Okay, so I have my uh, mini Django app running. Uh, so we're gonna see, I think, yeah, we're done. Ah, sorry, we have to compile the, the messages, right? So you can see that uh, the other two PO files were already compiled and just one has changed, so it's compiled again. So now we can run the server. We can go to our page uh, that I had previously. As you can see, uh, the two in the top are translated, but the new one falls back to the English version since we don't have a translation, but when I reload the page, we have the already translated the string, so it's working as before. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the idea behind the, the, the whole workflow. Uh, you can take a look at my repo that contains all the code uh, that is necessary uh, to create these CLI step commands, and you can check it out and see how it's done, and you can just copy paste into your project. It has not been yet a libra uh, created library, uh, but I, I create <laughs> a library or I want to contribute this to the Django core. Um, so summarizing, the current Django for, uh, workflow works well for a small to medium-sized project, and you don't need to worry about uh, taking this uh, over engineering your translation workflow if you are okay with it. So that's the first thing I have to say. Only if you start uh, seeing problems like we did, like translation to a month and a half to be, tr to be done. So then you have to think of something like this. Uh, so the proposed workflow also works well and has been proven in real scenarios. As I mentioned before, we have this pretty big client that needed the, the, the translations to be done. So this workflow was improved like around six months and little details here and little details there. Uh, so it has been proved and, and it works. Um, by implementing this workflow, you also will be able to send parallel uh, projects for translation. As I mentioned it before, this is one of the major advantages that we have right now. Uh, we just send relevant information for translators so they can focus on the work they are doing. Uh, we don't send just noise. And this can make your, your translation workflow easier and faster. You will not be uh, wasting anyone's time. So I think pretty much done with my talk. Uh, pretty thanks.